What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. It's Sunday, November 4th, 2018. You know, I figured it was about time to do a van tour video. I've done a number of these over the years, throughout my years of living in the van. It's been a while, and so I figured I'd give you guys a fresh tour of how I've got my van set up and how I approach the whole lifestyle of living in a van. So this thing is a 1991 Volkswagen Westfalia. It's a two-wheel drive, automatic transmission. Originally, I bought it back in 2010 as the ultimate road trip machine for going out and shooting landscape photography. The fact that you could road trip through the night, end up in a scene, catch a few hours of sleep, and wake up for a sunrise and shoot photography, or vice versa with a sunset and have everything that you needed right here with you. And I've done a lot of work on it over the years, A, maintaining it, B, building it into exactly what I wanted, and C, making it comfortable for living in it. Really, it's become the, the ultimate machine for the kind of things that I like to do. All right, guys, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is the window tent in this situation. I've gone with very dark tent that's not blacked out, there's not curtains drawn, there's not cardboard up in the windows, it's just dark window tent. And there's a lot of different theories and a lot of people approach this stuff uh, a different way. My two big things was A, privacy, so that I could be inside and not have looky-loos looking in on me. Uh, but then also, the other biggest thing was inconspicuousy. Yes, it's easy to, to draw curtains and have privacy that way, but the thing is when you're parked in and around an urban area, if you're living in your van, that's quite common, um, and people see curtains drawn, that's a dead giveaway that somebody possibly is living inside. It just raises questions of, ooh, what's going on? It's kind of shady. So my approach to that was to get as dark of window tent that I possibly could on the back, and then when my curtains are drawn, nobody can see that my curtains are drawn. And at night, when I have lights on, I can actually draw my curtains and between the curtains and the tent, you can't see that there's any lights on inside. So like I said, there's a lot of different theories. A lot of people approach that different ways. There is no way that you're gonna be able to see anybody inside there, which was very important to me. But then also the fact that you won't be able to see your curtains drawn inside there. I've never had any issues with anybody pulling me over because it's too dark or anything like that. Once we're inside the van, you can see that the tinting is not actually that bad. You still have quite a bit of view through to the outside of the van, which is nice because you can be sitting in here, nobody can see you inside, but the great thing is you can keep an eye on the outside and it's still comfortable living as far as having natural light come inside. This setup has worked very, very well for me and it's been an, a very important part to uh, my van life. One thing that I have done a lot of with my van is put a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort into building the ruggedness of my van and the capabilities of taking the path less traveled. Uh, so there is a lot about that that I do wanna cover. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, I'm gonna do that in a future video, so be looking for that. At this point, I'm gonna take you inside and show you more about what it takes to live in the van and all this stuff of getting out into the, into the wilderness, taking that path less traveled. We'll do that for another video. All right, guys, this is my 91 Westfalia interior. As many of you guys know is that uh, they come with so many camping amenities already built into them with the cabinets and the storage, the pop top, all of that makes adapting this thing to van life extremely easy. This is what I call a living room mode. You can see the back bed is folded up into a couch. I've got the nice throw rug. This makes it comfortable for getting up in the morning. Uh, your toes are nice and comfortable on the nice shag carpet there. Um, I've also got the Mr. Heater, Big Buddy Heater. Many of you guys out there living the van life right now know all about these things. These are a great addition to it. You do have to worry about ventilation. Make sure you've got plenty of oxygen flowing. Uh, it's a good idea to set up a CO2 sensor inside your vehicle. It does put moisture into the air, so make sure you have ventilation. For me, I open up this top uh, vent here. I also crack my front windows by, oh, I'd say maybe half an inch on each side, uh, driver's side and passenger side, and that allows a lot of ventilation. I do not sleep with the heater on. I do not 
sleep with the heater on. That's one thing. Anytime I talk about these heaters in the videos, I get a ton of comments. People talking about how dangerous they are, how much oxygen you need, how much moisture they put in the air. It is all true. Uh, just make sure that you take care to air out your van. Make sure that you get plenty of ventilation and do not sleep with it on. Uh, it does have a tip protection, so if it tips over, it does shut off. In here is kind of a cool uh, cabinet. In here I store, yeah, it's kind of a closet because it does have a coat hanger up at the top. So if you want to hang some nice shirts, some nice clothes up in there, you do have that capabilities. Uh, right now I've got a sweatshirt, a waterproof winter coat. Um, I do keep my tire chains in here. That's where my tire chains sit. Uh, for snow and quite honestly, I, I like to keep them around even in the summertime if I'm getting up into the backcountry if I come across some mud There's a chance these things could actually get me out of that situation um, Coleman LED lantern inside this I've got a complete toolkit With just about every tool that you could possibly need to work on a van again tools that I know I would use could use That all sits back here in this cabinet uh, in the back here is where the bed folds up. Uh, I've got my down sleeping bag. Having a good sleeping bag is key to staying warm, especially in the, in the winter months. I prefer to do a sleeping bag over actual bedding because of its uh, organizational opportunities. Uh, it folds up nice and compact. That's my entire bedding right there. I've got a couple pillows in there. I do have a mattress topper. In here, I got that from Costco and I cut it down to fit the Westfalia bed. Anyways, that just folds over in the back. Everything folds up nicely. Like I said, I prefer that over actual bedding just because it keeps it simple, it keeps it organized, and I've got more storage room for whatever else could go in there. The other great thing about the Westfalia is, is they do come with captain's chairs uh, in the front. And essentially what you can do is you can hit the latch and you can actually take this thing, spin it around. And if you've got guests coming over to hang out in your van and enjoy the van life with you, uh, you can actually turn that chair around and have an actual third seat. The driver's seat also spins at least halfway around and could supply an optional seat for even a fourth person. So. As you can see, you can get quite cozy in living room mode, as I call it, here in the Westfalia. Normally, I like to run that table right up here in this spot here. And what that allows us to do is have easy access without having to pull the table out uh, to the cabinets that are right here. Which, like I said, if you're hanging out here in the back seat or if you're in bed mode, then you have uh, easy access to this. The thing I like about this, you can flip this around. I can sit up right in there. If you're working on a laptop computer, whatever it is, maybe doing paperwork, whatever it is you gotta do for the van life, it folds away during travel, tightens up here and it stays nicely right against that. Great thing about the Westfalia is it does have the kitchenette. It's got a built-in stove here. It does have a sink here. I've cooked on in here a few times, but it's handy to have. Uh, could be handy for those of you that like to do a lot of cooking in your van. We've got the refrigerator. The refrigerator works off of either propane, works off of plug-in power or 12 volt power while you're driving. In the summertime on a road trip, I'll fire it up off of propane and uh, keep the old drinks cold. Under here, we got some more storage. In here, this is uh, how I like to keep myself organized in these tackle boxes. Um, you know, it's kind of like a junk drawer. Everybody's got junk drawers in their house. I've got a junk drawer here in my van and this is how I keep it organized. Utensils, stuff of that sort, come down in here. Forks, knives, can openers, etc. Like I said guys, keeping things organized. Up here, another actual junk drawer, but this one's a little more accessible. Uh, you can keep all sorts of various stored stuff in here that you might need on a regular basis. I think my other favorite part about van life in a Westfalia, besides the, the great cabinetry that comes along with a camper van like this, uh, or its compactness and being able to 
fit into any urban situation, really. I mean, it easily blends into the streets if you're parking in a neighborhood, amongst other vehicles. It's compact, it's nimble, it's great off-road. But the other great thing is, is about how easily it goes into bed mode. And you can be on the road late into the night, pull off on the side of the road, flick the bed into bed mode, Great thing about this mattress topper is it makes a night sleep in the van absolutely perfectly comfortable. And there you have it. You're in bed mode. You're ready to go crash for the night. With the Westphalia, the way that the back seat flips up and around into the bed, it allows for a lot of storage area underneath this back seat. I've been able to utilize this space by storing my laundry underneath. I've got socks, underwear, shirts, jeans, a few extra clothes. Uh, some shoes, all my dirty laundry tucks in underneath there, all nice and stored away under the back seat, keeping van life nice and organized and simple. There's something about the general population, they, they feel that there's something shady going on if somebody's living in their van. So it's important to blend in and not attract that kind of attention. And I've done several videos on stealth camping and stuff like that, even in this video talking about the window tent. And if your vehicle has any sort of pop top or anything like that, obviously as soon as you get into an urban situation and you go pop your top, all your stealthiness, all your inconspicuous goes away. You're gonna stick out like a sore thumb because it looks like you've pitched your tent right in the middle of the town. So I do love the fact that my Westphalia does have the pop top. I do not use it when I'm camping in an urban situation, a, a town, a city, anything like that. If I'm out on a dirt road camping in the wilderness, then by all means, heck yeah, I use that thing. And it's great having the extra room up top and being able to store stuff up there. I'm six foot two. I can be here and not even hardly reach the top. And a uh, ton of room to be able to uh, store stuff. Uh, obviously this pops down into a bed so you can sleep another two people if you'd like. But if you're traveling solo and you've got various other goods like camera gear and you're off the grid, you're out in the wilderness, not in an urban situation, you got tons of storage up here. You can get it up here out of your way. Keep your life simple. It's got uh, windows that zip down, lets in lots of light, lots of air. It's pretty great. Hopefully that was a good refresher of how I approach living in my 91 Volkswagen Westfalia. I started living in my van back in 2011. A lot of the videos I did were from several years ago and I figured it was worth coming back and revisiting some of those concepts, showing you what's changed, how I approach things these days. There's a million people out there doing it. They've got a thousand different ways of how to approach it. This is how I approach it and hopefully you guys can find some insight Anyways, I would love to hear your guys' feedback. Leave comments down below. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, uh, etc., etc. These are always the fun videos when everybody chimes in about their views on living in a van and all that good stuff, and I love seeing that. So, guys, much appreciated. Thank you for everybody who's been with me over the years. Thank you to all the new people coming on board, all the new subscribers. If you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Make sure and hit the like button. And if you hit the dislike button, let me know why. I want to know why you didn't like something on the, on the video. So anyways, guys, I got to get back to work. I got some video editing to do. Peace out. Keep on trucking.